The Yillian Way by Keith Laumer. Recording by Dale Grothman. The ceremonious protocols of the Yills was impressive, colorful, and in the long run, deadly. Jamie Retrieve, vice counsel and third secretary in the diplomatic corps, followed the senior members of the terrestrial mission across the tarmac and into the gloom of the reception building. The gray-skinned Yill guide, who had met the arriving embassy at the foot of the ramp, hurried away. The counselor, two first secretaries, and the senior attachés gathered around the ambassador, their ornate uniforms bright in the vast dun-colored room. Ten minutes passed. Retrieve strolled across to the nearest door and looked through the glass panel at the room beyond. Several dozen Yill lounged in deep couches, sipping lavender drinks from slender glass tubes. Black tunic servants moved about inconspicuously, offering trays. A party of brightly dressed Yill moved toward the entrance doors. One of the party, a tall male, made to step before another, who raised a hand languidly, fist clenched. The first Yill stepped back and placed his hands on the top of his head. Both Yill were smiling and chatting as they passed through the doors. Retrieve turned away to rejoin the terrestrial delegation, waiting beside a mound of crates made of rough greenish wood stacked on the bare concrete floor. As Retrieve came up, Ambassador Spradley glanced at his finger watch and spoke to the man beside him. Then, are you quite certain our arrival time was made clear? Second Secretary Magnan nodded emphatically. I stressed the point, Mr. Ambassador. I communicated with Mr. Tichai Chai just before the lighter broke orbit, and I specifically... I hope you didn't appear truculent, Mr. Magnan, the Ambassador said sharply. No, indeed, Ambassador. I merely... You're sure there's no VIP room here? The ambassador glanced around the cavernous room. Curious that not even chairs have been provided. If you'd care to sit on one of these crates, certainly not. The ambassador looked at his watch again and cleared his throat. I may as well make use of these few moments to outline our approach for the more junior members of the staff. It's vital that the entire mission work in harmony in the presentation of the image. We terrestrials are a kindly, peace-loving race. The ambassador smiled in a kindly, peace-loving way. We seek only a reasonable division of spheres of influence with the Yill. He spread his hands, looking reasonable. We are a people of high culture, ethical, and sincere. The smile was replaced abruptly by pursed lips. We'll start by asking for the entire Serenian system and settle for half. We'll establish a foothold on all the choicer worlds. And, with shrewd handling, in a century we'll be in a position to assert a wider claim. The ambassador glanced around. If there are no questions, retrieve step forward. It's my understanding, Mr. Ambassador, that we hold the prior claim on the Serenian system. Did I understand Your Excellency to say that we're ready to concede half of it to the Yill without a struggle? Ambassador Spradley looked up at Retrieve, blinking. The young man loomed over him. Beside him, Magnan cleared his throat in the silence. Vice Council Retrieve merely means... I can interpret Mr. Retrieve's remarks, the ambassador snapped. He assumed a fatherly expression. Young man, you're new to the service. You haven't yet learned the team play, the give and take of diplomacy. I shall expect you to observe closely the work of the experienced negotiators of the mission. You must learn the importance of subtlety. 
Mr. Ambassador, Magnan said, I think the reception committee is arriving. He pointed. Half a dozen tall, short-necked yill were entering through a side door. The leading yill hesitated as another stepped in his path. He raised a fist, and the other moved aside, touching the top of his head perfunctorily with both hands. The group started across the room toward the terrestrials. Retrief watched as a slender alien came forward and spoke passable Terran in a reedy voice. I am Patol. Come this way. He turned, and the group moved toward the door, the ambassador leading. As he reached for the door, the interpreter darted ahead and shouldered him aside. The other yell stopped waiting. The ambassador almost glared, then remembered the image. He smiled and beckoned the yill ahead. They milled uncertainly, muttering in the native tongue, then passed through the door. The Terran party followed. Give a great deal to know what they're saying, Retrief overheard as he came up. Our interpreter has forged to the van, the ambassador said. I can only assume he'll appear when needed. A pity we have to rely on a native interpreter, someone said. Had I known we'd meet this rather uncouth reception, the ambassador said stiffly, I would have audited the language personally, of course, during the voyage out. Oh, no criticism intended, of course, Mr. Ambassador. Heavens, Magnan put in. Who would have thought? Retrief moved up behind the ambassador. Mr. Ambassador, he said, I... Later, young man, the ambassador snapped. He beckoned to the first counselor, and the two moved off, heads together. Outside, a bluish sun gleamed in the dark sky. Retrief watched his breath form a frosty cloud in the chill air. A broad, donut-wheeled vehicle was drawn up to the platform. The Yill gestured the Terran party to the gaping door in the rear, then stood back, waiting. Retrief looked curiously at the gray-painted van. The legend written on the side in alien symbols seemed to read, Eggnog. The ambassador entered the vehicle, the other terrestrials following. It was as bare of seats as a terminal building. What appeared to be a defunct electronic chassis lay in the center of the floor. Retrief glanced back. The Yill were talking excitedly. None of them entered the car. The door was closed, and the Terrans braced themselves under the low roof as the engine started up with a whine of worn turbos. The van moved off. It was an uncomfortable ride. Retrief put out an arm as the vehicle rounded a corner, just catching the ambassador as he staggered, off balance. The ambassador glared at him, settled his heavy tricornered hat, and stood stiffly until the car lurched again. Retrief stooped, attempting to see out through the single dusty window. They seemed to be in a wide street, lined with low buildings. They passed through a massive gate, up a ramp, and stopped. The door opened. Retrief looked out at a blank gray facade, broken by tiny windows at irregular intervals. A scarlet vehicle was drawn up ahead. The Yill Reception Committee emerged from it. Through its wide windows, Retrief saw rich upholstery, and caught a glimpse of glasses clamped to a tiny bar. Patoy, the ill interpreter, came forward, gesturing to a small door. Magnan opened it, waiting for the ambassador. As he stepped to it, the ill thrust himself ahead and hesitated. Ambassador Spradley drew himself up, glaring. Then he twisted his mouth into a frozen smile and stepped inside. The Yill looked at each other, then filed through the door. Retrief was the last to enter. As he stepped inside, a black-clad servant slipped past him. 
pulled the lid from a large box by the door and dropped a paper tray heaped with refuse. There were alien symbols in the flake paint on the box. They seemed, Retrief noted, to spell eggnog. 2. The shrill pipes and whining reeds had been warming up for an hour when Retrief emerged from his cubicle and descended the stairs to the banquet hall. Standing by the open doors, he lit a slender cigar and watched through narrowed eyes as the obsequious servants in black flitted along the low, wide corridor, carrying laden trays into the boardroom, arranging settings on the great four-sided table forming a hollow square that almost filled the room. Rich brocades were spread across the center of the side nearest the door, flanked by heavily decorated white cloths. Beyond, plain white extended to the far side, where metal dishes were arranged on the bare tabletop. A richly dressed Yill approached, stepped aside to allow a servant to pass, and entered the room. Retrief turned at the sound of Terran voices behind him. The ambassador came up, trailed by two diplomats. He glanced at Retrief, adjusted his ruff, and looked into the banquet hall. Apparently we're to be kept waiting again, he muttered. After having been informed at the onset that the yell had no intention of yielding an inch, one almost wonders. Mr. Ambassador, Retrief said, have you noticed? However, Ambassador Bradley said, eyeing Retrief, a seasoned diplomat must take these little snubs in stride. In the end, ah, there, Magnan. He turned away, talking. Somewhere, a gong clanged. In a moment, the corridor was filled with chattering yill, who moved past the group of terrestrials into the banquet hall. Patoy, the yill interpreter, came up and raised a hand. Wait here. More Yill filed into the dining room to take their places. A pair of helmeted guards approached, waving the terrestrials back. An immense gray-jowled Yill waddled to the door and passed through, followed by more guards. The Chief of State, Retreat heard Magnan say, the admirable Faka Ka Ka. I have yet to present my credentials, Ambassador Spradley said. One expects some latitude in the observance of protocol, but I confess, he wagged his head. The Yill interpreter spoke up. You now will lie on your intestines and creep to festive board there, he pointed across the room. Intestines? Ambassador Spradley looked about wildly. Mr. Patoy means our stomachs, I wouldn't wonder, Magnan said. He just wants us to lie down and crawl to our seats, Mr. Ambassador. What the devil are you grinning at, you idiot? The Ambassador stamped. Magnan's face fell. Spradley glanced down at the medals across his paunch. This is... I've never... Homage to the goddess, the interpreter said. Oh, oh, religion, someone said. Well, if it's a matter of religious beliefs, the ambassador looked dubiously around. Golly, it's only a couple of hundred feet, Magnan offered. Retrief stepped up to Patoy. His Excellency, the terrestrial ambassador, will not crawl, he said clearly. Here, young man, I said nothing. Not to crawl, the interpreter wore an unreadable yill expression. It's against our religion, Retrieve said. Against? We are votives of the snake goddess, Retrieve said. It is a sacrilege to crawl. He brushed past the interpreter and marched toward the distant table. The others followed. Puffing. The ambassador came to Retrieve's side as they approached a dozen empty stools on the far side of the square opposite the brocade position of the admirable Faka Ka Ka. 
Mr. Retrieve, kindly see me after this affair, he hissed. In the meantime, I hope you will restrain from further rash impulses. Let me remind you I am the chief of mission here. Magnan came up from behind. Let me add my congratulations, Retrieve, he said. That was fast thinking. Are you out of your mind, Magnan? the ambassador barked. I am extremely displeased. Why, Magnan stuttered, I was speaking sarcastically, of course, Mr. Ambassador. Didn't you notice the kind of shocked little gasp I gave when he did it? The terrestrials took their places, retrieve at the end. The table before them was of bare green wood, with an array of shallow pewter dishes. Some of the yill at the table were in plain gray, others in black. All eyed them silently. There was a constant stir among them as one or another rose and disappeared, and others sat down. The pipes and reeds were shrilling furiously, and the susurration of yelling conversation from the other tables rose ever higher in competition. A tall yill in black was at the ambassador's side now. The nearby yill fell silent as he began ladling a whitish soup into the largest of the bowls before the terrestrial envoy. The interpreter hovered, watching. That's quite enough, Ambassador Spradley said, as the bowl overflowed. The yill servant rolled his eyes, dribbled more of the soup into the bowl. Kindly serve the other members of my staff, the ambassador said. The interpreter said something in a low voice. The servant moved hesitantly to the next stool and ladled more soup. Retrief watched, listening to the whispers around him. The yill at the table were craning now to watch. The soup ladler was ladling rapidly, rolling his eyes sideways. He came to Retrief, reached out with a full ladle for the bowl. No, said Retrief. The ladler hesitated. None for me, Retrief said. The interpreter came up and motioned to the servant, who reached again, ladle brimming. I don't like it, Retrief said, his voice distinct in the sudden hush. He stared at the interpreter, who stared back, then waved the servant away. Mr. Retrief, a voice hissed. Retrief looked down the table. The ambassador was leaning forward, glaring at him, his face a mottled crimson. I'm warning you, Mr. Retrief, he said hoarsely. I've eaten sheep's eyes in the Sudan, Ka Swa in Burma, hundred-year chug on Mars, and everything else that's been placed before me in the course of my diplomatic career. And by the holy relics of St. Ignatz, you'll do the same. He snatched up a spoon-like utensil and dipped it into his bowl. Don't eat that, Mr. Ambassador, Retrieve said. The ambassador stared wide-eyed. He opened his mouth, guiding the spoon toward it. Retrief stood, gripped the table under its edge, and heaved. The immense wooden slab rose and tilted, dishes sliding. It crashed to the floor with a ponderous slam. Whitish soup spattered across the terrazzo. A couple of odd bowls rolled across the room. Cries rang out from the yill, mingled with a strangled yell from Ambassador Spradley. Retrief walked past the wide-eyed members of the mission to the sputtering chief. Mr. Ambassador, he said, I'd like, you'd like, I'll break you, you young hoodlum. Do you realize? Please, the interpreter stood at Retrief's side. My apologies, Ambassador Spradley said, mopping his forehead. My profound apologies. Be quiet, Retrief said. What? What? Don't apologize, Retrief said. Patoy was beckoning. Please, I'll come. Retrief turned and followed him. 
The portion of table they were ushered to was covered with an embroidered white cloth, set with thin porcelain dishes. The yill already seated there rose, amid babbling, and moved down the table. The black-clad yill at the end table closed ranks to fill the vacant seats. Retrieve sat down and found Magnan at his side. What's going on here? the second secretary said angrily. They were giving us dog food, Retrieve said. I overheard a yill. They seated us at the bottom of the servants' table. You mean you know their language? I learned it on the way out. Enough, at least. The music burst out with a clangorous fanfare, and a throng of jugglers, dancers, and acrobats poured into the center of the hollow square frantically juggling, dancing, and back-flipping. Black-clad servants swarmed suddenly, heaping mounds of fragrant food onto the plates of yill and terrestrials alike, pouring a pale purple liqueur into slender glasses. Retrief sampled the yill food. It was delicious. Conversation was impossible in the din. He watched the gaudy display and ate heartily. 3. Retrief leaned back, grateful for the lull in the music. The last of the dishes were whisked away, and more glasses filled. The exhausted entertainer stopped to pick up the thick square coins the diners threw. Retrief sighed. It had been a rare feast. Retrief, Magnan said in the comparative quiet, what were you saying about dog food as the music came up? Retrief looked at him. Haven't you noticed the pattern, Mr. Magnan? A series of deliberate affronts. Deliberate affronts? Just a minute, Retrief. They're uncouth, yes, crowding into doorways and that sort of thing. He looked at Retrief uncertainly. They herded us into a baggage warehouse at the terminal. Then they hauled us here in a garbage truck. Garbage truck? Only symbolic, of course. They ushered us in the tradesman's entrance, and assigned us cubicles in the servant's wing. Then we were seated with the coolie class sweepers at the bottom of the table. You must be... I mean, we're the terrestrial delegation. Surely these yield must realize our power. Precisely, Mr. Magnan, but... With a clang of cymbals, the musicians launched a renewed assault. Six tall, helmeted yill sprang into the center of the floor and paired off in a wild performance, half dance, half combat. Magnan pulled at Retrieve's arm, his mouth moving. Retrieve shook his head. No one could talk against the yill orchestra in full cry. He sampled a bright red wine and watched the show. There was a flurry of action, and two of the dancers stumbled and collapsed their partner opponents whirling away to pair off again, describe the elaborate pre-combat ritual, and abruptly set to, dull sabers clashing. And two more yill were down, stunned. It was a violent dance. Retrief watched the drink forgotten. The last two yill approached and retreated, whirled, bobbed, and spun, feigned, and postured. And on the instant, clashed, straining chest to chest, then broke apart, heavy weapons chopping, parrying, as the music mounted to a frenzy. Evenly matched the two hacked, thrust, blow for blow, across the floor, then back, defense forgotten, slugging it out. And then one was slipping, going down, helmet awry. The other, a giant, muscular yill, spun away whirled in a mad scurl of pipes as coins showered, then froze before a gaudy table, raised the saber, and slammed it down with a resounding blow across the gay cloth before a lace and bow bedecked yill in the same instant that the music stopped. In utter silence, the dancer fighters stared across the table at the seated yill. With a shout, the yill leapt up, raised a clenched fist, the dancer bowed his head and spread his hands on his helmet. Retrief took a deep gulp of the pale yellow liqueur 
and leaned forward to watch. The beribboned Yill waved a hand negligently, spilled a handful of coins across the table, and sat down. The challenger spun away in a screeching shrill of music. Retrief caught his eye for an instant as he passed. Then the dancer stood rigid before the brocade table, and the music stopped off short as the saber slammed down before a heavy yill in ornate metal coils. The challenged yill rose and raised a fist. The other ducked his head, put his hands on his helmet. The coins rolled. The dancer moved on. Twice more the dancer struck the table in ritualistic challenge, exchanged gestures, bent his neck, and passed on. He circled the broad floor, saber twirling, arms darting in an intricate symbolism. The orchestra blared shrilly, unmuffled now by the surf roar of conversation. The yill, Retrief noticed suddenly, were sitting silent, watching. The dancer was closer now, and then he was before Retrief, poised, towering, saber above his head. The music cut, and in the startling instantaneous silence the heavy saber whipped over and down with an explosive concussion that set the dishes dancing on the tabletop. The yill's eyes held on Retrief's. In the silence Magnan tittered drunkenly. Retrief pushed back his stool. "'Steady, my boy,' Ambassador Spradling called. Retrief stood. The yill topped his six-foot-three by an inch. In a motion almost too quick to follow, Retrief reached for the saber, twitched it from the yill's grip, swung it in a whistling cut. The yill ducked, sprang back, snatched up a saber dropped by another dancer. "'Someone stop that madman!' Spradley howled. Retrief leapt across the table, sending fragile dishes spinning. The other danced back, and only then did the orchestra spring to life with a screech and a mad tattoo of high-pitched drums. Making no attempt to follow the weaving pattern of the Yil Bolero, Retrief pressed the other, fending off vicious cuts with the blunt weapon, chopping back relentlessly. Left hand on hip, Retrief matched blow for blow, driving the other back. Abruptly the Yil abandoned the double roll. Dancing forgotten, he settled down in earnest, cutting, thrusting, parrying, and now the two stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, sabers clashing in a lightning exchange. The Yill gave a step, two, then rallied, drove Retrief back, back, and the Yill stumbled, his saber clattered, and Retrief dropped his point as the other wavered past him and crashed to the floor. The orchestra fell silent in a descending wail of reeds. Retrief drew a deep breath and wiped his forehead. "'Come back here, you young fools,' Bradley called hoarsely. Retrief hefted the saber, turned, eyed the brocade-draped table. He started across the floor. The gill sat as if paralyzed. "'Retrief, no!' Bradley yelled. Retrief walked directly to the admirable Faka Ka Ka, stopped, raised the saber. Not the chief of staff, someone in the terrestrial mission groaned. Retrief whipped the saber down. The dull blade split the cloth and clove the hardwood table. There was utter silence. The admirable Faka Ka Ka rose seven feet of obese gray yill broad face expressionless to any Terran eye. He raised a fist like a jewel-studded ham. Retrief stood rigid for a long moment. Then, gracefully, he inclined his head, placed his fingertips on his temples. Behind him there was a clatter as Ambassador Spradley collapsed. Then the admirable Faka Ka Ka cried out and reached across the table to embrace the terrestrial and the orchestra went mad. Gray hands helped Retrief across the table. Stools were pushed aside to make room at Faka Ka Ka's side. Retrief sat, took a long flagon of coal-black brandy pressed on him by his neighbor. 
clashed the glass with the admirable, and drank. 4. Retrief turned at the touch on his shoulder. The ambassador wants to speak to you, Retrief, Magnan said. Retrief looked across to where Ambassador Spradley sat glowering behind the plain tablecloth. Under the circumstances, Retrief said, you'd better ask him to come over here. The ambassador? Magnan's voice cracked. Never mind the protocol, Retrief said. The situation is still delicate. Magnan went away. The feast ends, the cow 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 said. Now you and I, Retrief, must straddle the council stool. I'll be honored, Admirable, Retrief said. I must inform my colleagues. Colleagues, the cow 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 said. It is for chiefs to parley. Who shall speak for a king while he yet has a tongue for talk? The Yilway is wise, Retrief said. The cow 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 emptied a squat tumbler of pink beer. I will treat with you, Retrief, as viceroy, since, as you say, your king is old and the space between worlds is far. But there shall be no scheming underlings privy to our dealings. He grinned a yill grin. Afterwards we shall carouse, Retrief. The council stool is hard and the waiting handmaidens delectable. This makes for quick agreement. Retrief smiled. The king is wise. Of course, a being prefers wenches of his own kind, the cow 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 said. He belched. The minister of culture has imported several terry excuse me retrief terrestrial joy girls said to be top-notch specimens at least they have very fat whatchamacallit the king is most considerate retrief said let us do it then retrief i may hazard a fling with one of your terries myself i fancy an occasional perversion the cow 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 dug an elbow into retrief's side and bellowed with laughter. Ambassador Spradley hurried to intercept Retrief as he crossed to the door at the cow cow cow's side. Retrief, kindly excuse yourself. I wish a word with you. His voice was icy. Magnan stood behind him, goggling. Mr. Ambassador, forgive my apparent rudeness, Retrief said. I don't have time to explain now. Rudeness? Spradley barked. Don't have time, eh? Let me tell you. Lower your voice, Mr. Ambassador, Retrief said. Spradley quivered, mouth open, speechless. If you'll sit down and wait quietly, Retrief said, I think. You think, Spradley spluttered. Silence, Retrief said. Spradley looked up at Retrief's face. He stared for a moment into Retrief's gray eyes, closed his mouth, and swallowed. The Yill seem to have gotten the impression I'm in charge, Retrief said. We'll have to keep it up. But, but, Spradley stuttered. Then he straightened. This is the last straw, he whispered hoarsely. I am the terrestrial ambassador extraordinary and minister plentemporary. Magnan has told me that we have been studiedly insulted, repeatedly, since the moment of our arrival, kept waiting in the baggage rooms, transported in refuse lorries, herded about with servants, offered swill at table. Now I and my senior staff are left cooling our heels, without even so much as an audience, while this, this multiple cow person hobnobs with, with, Spradley's voice broke. I may have been a trifle hasty, Retrief, in attempting to restrain you. Blaspheming the native gods and dumping the banquet table are rather extreme measures, but your resentment was perhaps partially justified. I am prepared to be lenient with you. He fixed a choleric eye on Retrief. I am walking out of this meeting, Mr. Retrief. I'll have no more of these deliberate personal— That's enough, Retrief snapped. You're keeping the king waiting. 
Get back to your chair and sit there until I come back. Magnan found his voice. What are you going to do, Retrief? I'm going to handle the negotiation, Retrief said. He handed Magnan his empty glass. Now go sit down and work on the image. At his desk, in the VIP suite aboard the orbiting core vessel, Ambassador Spradley pursed his lips and looked severely at Vice Consul Retrief. Further, he said, you have displayed a complete lack of understanding of core discipline, the respect due a senior agent. Even the basic courtesies, your aggravated displays of temper, ill-timed outbursts of violence, and almost incredible arrogance in the assumption of authority make your further retention as an officer agent of the diplomatic corps impossible. It will therefore be my unhappy duty to recommend your immediate there was a muted buzz from the communicator. The ambassador cleared his throat. Well? A signal from the Sector HQ, Mr. Ambassador, a voice said. Well? Read it, Spradley snapped. Skip the preliminaries. Congratulations on the unprecedented success of your mission. The articles of agreement transmitted by you embody the most favorable resolution of a difficult Serenian situation and will form the basis of continued amicable relations between the terrestrial states and the Yale Empire. To you and your staff, full credit is due for a job well done. Signed, Deputy Assistant Secretary. Spradley cut off the voice impatiently. He shuffled papers, eyed retrief sharply. Superficially, of course, an uninitiated observer might leap to the conclusion that the um, results that were produced, in spite of these um, irregularities, justify the latter. The ambassador smiled a sad, wise smile. This is far from the case, he said. I, the communicator, burped softly. Confound it, Spradley muttered. Yes? Mr. Takaka has arrived, the voice said. Shall I? Send him in at once. Spradley glanced at Retrief. Only a two-syllable man, but I shall attempt to correct these false impressions. Make some amends. The two terrestrials waited silently until the Yale Protocol chief tapped at the door. I hope, the ambassador said, that you will resist the impulse to take advantage of your unusual position. He looked at the door. Come in. Takai Kai stepped into the room, glanced at Spradley, turned to greet Retrief in voluble yell. He rounded the desk to the ambassador's chair, motioned him from it, and sat down. I have a surprise for you, Retrief, he said, in Terran. I myself have made use of the teaching machine you so kindly lent us. That's fine, to Kai Kai, Retrief said. I'm sure Mr. Spradley will be interested in hearing what we have to say. Never mind, the eel said. I am here only socially. He looked around the room. So plainly you decorate your chamber but it has certain austere charm. He laughed a yell laugh. Oh, you are a strange breed, you terrestrials. You surprised us all. You know, one hears such outlandish stories. I tell you in confidence, we had expected you to be overpushes. Pushovers, Spradley said tonelessly. Such restraint. What pleasure you gave to those of us like myself, of course. Who appreciated your grasp of protocol such finesse how subtly you appeared to ignore every overture while neatly avoiding actual contamination I can tell you there were those who thought poor fools that you had no grasp of etiquette how gratified we were we professionals who would appreciate your virtuosity when you placed matters on a comfortable basis by spurning the cat's meal. It was sheer pleasure then, waiting to see what form your compliment would take. 
The Yill offered orange cigars, stuffed one in his nostril. I confess that I had not hoped that you would honor our admirable so signally. Oh, it is a pleasure to deal with fellow professionals who understand the meaning of protocol. Ambassador Spradley made a choking sound. This fellow has caught a chill, Takai Kai said. He eyed Spradley dubiously. Step back, my man. I am highly susceptible. There is one bit of business I shall take pleasure in attending to, my dear Retrief, the Kai Kai went on. He drew a large paper out of his reticule. The Admirable has determined that none other than yourself shall be accredited here. I have here my government's executor confirming you as the Terrestrial Council General to Yill. We shall look forward to your prompt return. Retrief looked at Spradley. I'm sure the Corps will agree, he said. Then I shall be going, Takai Kai said. He stood up. Hurry back to us, Retrief. There is much I would like to show you of Yill. I'll hurry back, Retrief said, and, with a Yill wink, together we shall see many high and splendid things. End of the Yillian Way by Keith Laumer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org.